Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is a stop smoking relaxation hypnosis recording. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on beliefs. What do you believe about smoking for yourself? Do you believe that you can stop smoking or if you have stopped smoking do you believe you can stay stopped? Do you believe you need to smoke? Do you believe that cigarettes are enjoyable? Maybe you believe that because someone close to you smoked, therefore you should smoke. Maybe you believe there's no point stopping smoking now because you've been smoking for too long. And that's something that's not usually mentioned. So what is it you believe? And how willing are you to let those beliefs go? How attached are you to to your beliefs generally? Now some people they will hold on to a belief and like a dog holding on to a bone and they will not let go. Now there's a I can see why a dog would hold on to a bone because a bone's fun. Especially if it's a, a fresh bone, it's tasty and the dog wants to keep that bone. So it makes sense. when it comes to something that perhaps you don't want to do because that's one of the things with smoking is even people that smoke they don't want to smoke they want to but they don't want to there's always that kind of well everyone knows they're going to have to stop at some point and I don't know about you but I think I would choose to stop rather than be forced to stop I don't like the idea of really being forced to do anything because your power is not there you, you've lost your power and it's a, not a nice feeling you know your own power to decide for yourself what you choose to do for yourself so when you decide to stop smoking that's your choice you've taken control back instead of allowing the cigarettes or the cigars or the pipes or whatever it is you're smoking to have control over you you have decided to take control back and there's quite a nice feeling that comes from that there's a, an emotional strength that maybe if you imagine being smoke free, you know, having decided and, you, you know, really made up your mind. Not willy nilly, not just like maybe, but definitely there's something that you're not going to do anymore. In the same way as you wouldn't put, pick up, pick up a, a dog's turd from the floor and put it in your mouth. You know? And however disgusting the idea of doing that is, you might, if you can get even 10% of that level of you would never do it, then you'll never smoke again.
It doesn't have to be that disgusting to you. And it's not about being disgusted. It's not about feeling repulsed by cigarettes. That's one way to go. That is definitely one way to go. And I'm, I think I've done a recording kind of similar to that in the past. I did one uh, also about uh, nail, b- nail biting, which was particularly disgusting, but useful, helpful, and uh, it works. Because once you listen to it for an hour, to me going on, uh, the chances of you biting your nails after listening to that is is going to be hard. It's going to it's hard to do that because you're going to still keep remembering the things I said and the visuals, which were pretty gross and factual as well. So I don't go down the line generally with cigarettes of focusing on ill health and all the stuff that's almost bound to happen unfortunately and in the future if for people that smoke I mean it's going to happen for people that don't smoke as well but there's you know it, maybe ha- it happens a bit sooner for smokers uh, but I don't I try not to focus on that because that just a little bit too negative and I don't really like thinking about stuff like that myself plus if you really need someone to point out the negative benefit the negative benefits and negative results of smoking you know the possible illnesses that come from it then you probably don't know if you don't if you don't know about it, if you don't understand that You won't have understood how to use this podcast. You won't have understood how to press the play button, even though it says play. Because you'd have to be really, really, really dumb. I don't know you're not. Yeah, no one is. No one's that dumb to not know. We may ignore it, but none of us are dumb enough to not know. Especially with every pack of cigarettes these days with pictures of gross pictures on them and it's it's horrible so you don't really need me to tell you about that so coming from a psychological perspective coming from a human perspective coming from a, the angle of belief what is it you believe and so, some people really do stick to their beliefs uh, some people believe that they're never going to change. And if that was the case, then we'd all be, we'd all have, be acting like toddlers. I know some adults do still like, act, act like toddlers, but most people don't. We'd still be having tantrums. We'd still be, uh, believing stuff that we know now isn't true. Uh, for example, the Easter Bunny. I used to believe in the Easter Bunny. Now, I hope I haven't broken anyone's uh, fantasies or upset anyone by pointing out that the Easter Bunny doesn't exist. Uh, if I have, I do apologise. Maybe it does exist. Maybe I'm just wrong. It doesn't. Um, you know, this is aimed at adults, not at children. So... Things like that, things like Christmas and other such superstitious uh, fairy tale nonsense that children love, and it's wonderful to see children being excited over stuff like that. As adults, we know that that's just make-belief, but that was a real belief. That belief that we had before we got told that we were lied to for years by our parents and society and all adults oh brilliant all adults are liars great thanks but before that point we believed in certain things as children most of us uh maybe you know different 
different children, different ages learn at different times the truth. But there's a point in your life, if you're born in the Western world, that you're probably being lied to about, uh, you know, a fictional character that may deliver presents on a certain day of the year, or a bunny that delivers chocolate eggs, or some weird fairy that comes and uh, takes your your tooth from underneath your pillow while you're asleep. I always found that one a bit scary. So, but we believed that. Like, with all our energy, we believed it. So there's nothing you believe in your life that's any stronger than that. That belief, when we were kids, believing that the the tooth fairy would come in the night and leave money where the tooth was underneath your pillow. Now, with my in my house, we used to have we used to put the teeth into a jar with water, and the tooth fairy would change it and put money in there. I think that's because uh, my dad said the tooth fairy didn't like coming to my room because I farted when I was asleep, so the room was too smelly. So I don't know if that's true or not. But basically, those things were just as real to us as the belief that, you know, we are smokers. Just as real. That belief was just as real as the idea of maybe, oh, I can't stop smoking. I'm always going to be a smoker. I'm supposed to smoke. Smoke, I can't give up smoking. It's too difficult. That belief, in fact, that belief probably isn't as strong as the belief that this big fat man with a beard would uh, come down a chimney and uh, put presents at the bottom of your bed or under the Christmas tree. Now that belief was much stronger probably than the idea that you can't stop smoking simply because most people have stopped smoking at some point. I mean, first of all, if you start smoking, if you started when you were 16 or 18, so the first 16 or 18 years of your life you didn't smoke. So you can not smoke for decades there's not a case if you can't you or well, can't go about a cigarette well you have already proven that you can uh, every night you go to bed maybe you get six to eight hours sleep that's six to eight hours where you're not smoking so you can go for long periods of time without smoking if you ever go traveling go on holiday by the time you get you get into the airport and you go through to the lounge and you're on a, if you're on a long haul flight you might be 12 13 14 even 15 hours without having a cigarette that's a whole day when you have a cold or a chest infection maybe you don't smoke because you can't because you need your lungs to breathe. So there's all these times, and also the times when you've quit, when you've stopped smoking, maybe for a week, maybe for a month, maybe for six months, maybe for years. So you've got these examples of when you did stop. You know that you can not smoke. You know, it's, it's the belief that uh, oh, I can't stop smoking. That belief isn't even 10% as strong as believing in uh, Santa Claus or Father Christmas or the Easter Bunny or the uh, Tooth Fairy. It's not even 10% as strong as that belief the children have. And how is that belief broken? 
in a child just by being told the truth. And it's not a nice feeling, you know, to be told. It's just like, oh, I've been lied to. That's nice. Brilliant. And I remember what, I remember when I found out because I was about 32. But I, I remember I felt, I, I felt foolish. I felt like I was just a bit silly because both, two of my oldest brothers were a lot, quite a bit older than me. So they clearly knew before I did. And I felt like they were just laughing at me, which they probably were. But as soon as I found out, that was it. That belief was broken. It was smashed. It was cracked. It was obliterated. There was no going back. So what's the truth when it comes to smoking? If the truth is, actually you don't need to smoke. That's the truth. You can stop any time you want. That is the truth. cigarettes, tobacco, whatever, does not have any hold over you. That is the truth. So when you have that truth, bearing in mind that the belief that cigarettes have a hold over you and that you can't stop and all that stuff, all the things that we tell ourselves, is about 10% as strong as that belief that you had when you was a small child in some of these lies that were told to us. You know, Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy. Maybe others, maybe you got a tradition that you had this sort of similar or even different things. And then when you got to maybe 10, 9, 8, 43, I don't know, whatever age, and you told, oh, but, oh yeah, it's a lie, which has been lying to you for years and years and years. And uh, none of that was true. Merry Christmas. Uh, oh, okay. It smashes it straight away. You can't hold on to it. That belief is gone. You can't just decide, nope, I'm going to continue believing. You can't. You you can try, but it doesn't work. It's blown out of the water. There's a jigsaw puzzle with 70% of the pieces missing. There's no point. (laughs) There's no point to it. It's gone. It's like trying to run a marathon with water cupped in your hands and expecting the water to still be there when you get to the end of the marathon line for me it would be expecting to get to the marathon line because I wouldn't so that belief what other beliefs have you had in the past that you really believed you really believed I know a lot of people believed in the past that they'd never meet anyone I believed I was never going to have sex I really did. I'm pretty sure I will do one day. No, I, I really believed. I believed that not one woman will, would want to touch me. For years, you know, I, I didn't do very well with, you know, I lost my virginity when I was 19. I'm sharing too much. I don't care. Okay. 19. Most, most people at that period, 16, 17, some even younger. 19. I really believed I was going to die a virgin. I just thought, not one woman is even looking at me. I'm never going to be able to, you know, I was scared. Now I look back and I did have sex at least once. So that's not bad, is it? But that was a belief that I had. I believed that no woman would want to be with me. No woman would love me. Now I realise I'm talking about myself here, but I can't talk about you because I don't know you. But what what experiences, what examples do you have 
from when you were maybe in your 20s even. Things you believed in, things you really, really believed to be true and turned out to be complete bullshit. I'll give you a few seconds to think of something. There must be at least one thing that you believe to be true and you find out, oh, okay, maybe your own limitations, you believed that you wouldn't be able to do something and then it turned out that you could do that thing. Uh, An example could be public speaking. Another example could be uh, fearful of, well, I hope there's never um, a situation where I would need to help, you know, someone, like in an emergency, because I don't know what I would do. And then something happens, and you, you, you might not have known what to do, but you got through it. And you managed to do what was necessary to help that person in that situation. Perhaps you believed that you, I've got an example for myself. I never believed, not even for a second, that I could get a degree, like an undergraduate degree. I didn't believe I had the ability, the nothing. No, I just, I just did not believe I had the intelligence or the commitment or anything that would guide me to complete three years at university. And I kept that belief, not just for the first 37 years of my life, but I also kept that belief whilst I was doing the degree. I still didn't believe I was going to get the degree, even while I was doing the degree. And I passed, and I got my undergraduate degree of honours. Now, that belief has been broken. I can't have that belief anymore, because I got the degree. I can't, it's, it's not, it's not possible for me to have the belief that I couldn't complete an undergraduate degree because I've done it. How many people believed that they could not ever complete a marathon? Now, I personally, I know I, I don't feel that I could complete a marathon. Maybe with training, with proper training and, and preparation, perhaps I could. So I'm kind of, um, flippy floppy. I'm wishy washy with that one. It's a possibility. I used to be, I used to love running and jogging and stuff when I was younger. But, you know, I don't have that level of fitness these days. But who knows? How many people listening to this or in the future even listening to this believe that they could never run a marathon or even a half marathon and then they went ahead and did it? They went ahead and just applied and trained and prepared and turned up and completed the run. There are millions of people over decades and decades and decades that have done that, that have, you know, set their sights on a target which previously they never believed they could even, even even think about doing, never mind actually accomplishing. The same as smoking. Constantly through our life, beliefs get shattered and broken, and you can never go back to believe in something that you know is not true anymore. You can't do. It's it's gone. You know, if I if if I walked around my whole life thinking I was five foot eleven, and I get measured and I'm five foot eight, which is my actual height, I can't go back to believing I'm five foot eleven. 
Not really. I mean, I suppose I could try and kid myself. Live in denial. But I'd know, wouldn't I? I'd know. And the fact is everyone else around me would know as well because clearly I don't look five foot, five foot eleven. I don't, I'm not that tall. So you, you can see how a belief can be shattered. And once it breaks, it's almost like a, a bit of metal, you know, it's very sturdy, but you bend it, keep bending it, and eventually it breaks, it snaps, and that's it. You can't do anything with it. It's no longer useful to what it was being used for before. It's gone, it's broke. It's rubbish now. It's, you know, it doesn't work anymore. Take an engine out of a car, it doesn't work anymore. And you can, you can press buttons and you can turn the key, you can put your foot on the exhaust, you can go boom, boom, you can do anything you want. It's not going to make the car work. Once the belief is broken, it's broken. And you can no longer believe it. You can no longer believe those things because then it just becomes lies you're lying to yourself and we all know when we're lying to ourselves we all do it sometimes but it just doesn't work because a lie is not a belief a lie doesn't really have that strength that a belief has but once the belief's broken it's done It's like melted ice. A melted ice cube is no longer an ice cube. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, so <laughs> what are you talking about ice cubes for? Once the belief's broken, it's broken. Once you actually accept that you are not attached, you are not stuck as a smoker you're a human being with a choice you choose what you do next in every every second of your life you choose what you do next you're not a puppet we're not puppets we choose what we do next and it's kind of interesting because you know with smoking some people can take on the almost uh, victim mentality oh I've got, I've got to smoke you know just uh, no you don't have to do anything you don't have to it's a choice there's no there's no room for for being a victim or there's no room for that stuff when it comes to smoking there's no room for uh, oh I have to do it to be powerless because we're not powerless you're not powerless if you think you're powerless you're bullshitting yourself oh I've got no choice oh I have to smoke no you don't you got a choice every time there's a choice every cigarette any of us have ever had has been a choice as an adult it's a choice I realise as kids peer group pressure and stuff maybe it didn't feel like a choice if you're 13 14 maybe you didn't even want to smoke you know but as an adult as an actual adult human you choose what you do next So the belief system, the belief that you have no choice, the belief that you, oh, I have to smoke, or I'm a smoker, or I'm a, I'm this and I'm that, and no, none of that's true. 
You may smoke, but it doesn't mean you're a smoker. Any more than you eat, you're an eater. You eat food. You might eat chocolate, but you're not, that's not all you do. That's not your identity, is it? So why have smoking as an identity? It's not your personality. It's just something that you've chosen to do for a little while. And now maybe choosing not to do. So instead of having a uh, Because sometimes, you know, we can go down the road of having, I'm a non-smoker, or I'm an ex-smoker, almost as your moniker, as your personality, as your, as your, like, precursor to your first name. Instead of, sir, I'm, I'm a non-smoker. I'm an ex-smoker. Well, maybe don't make a big deal about it. Because the thing is, the only person interested in you stopping smoking mainly is just going to be you. Okay, maybe family, close family might care, you know, health-wise and stuff. It may affect them in a way, uh, in a positive way. But generally, no one really cares that you stop smoking. They're not interested. Most people, they're focusing on themselves. They're interested in their own lives, their own stuff. And maybe they've stopped drinking. And that's what they want to talk about. And you want to stop, maybe you want to talk about stopping smoking. And although it is a big, it's a big issue for you. It's a big thing that you've done. And you should feel good about yourself. Why not? It's a great accomplishment. It's not your identity. It's not your personality. It's not who you are. Which means, I don't know, any belief connected with smoking kind of gets smashed away. Sometimes it gets just cracked and just split to bits and no longer has any hold over you. And you start to feel differently. And you start to realize that, ah, oh, it's just a feeling. That feel of maybe wanting a cigarette, it's just a feeling. No more a feeling than wanting to scratch your ass when it's itchy. Or wanting to uh, stand up maybe to stretch your legs. No more feeling than needing to fart. It's just a feeling. Just a physical feeling. And then the thought might go into your head, oh, I want to do this. It's just a thought. Can you imagine if we did everything we thought about doing? We'd all get in trouble, wouldn't we? Let's face it. So many things that I think about are just fantasy. I can't do the things that I think about and I don't want to do the things that I'm thinking about. I'm just being creative. I'm just imagining things, imagining scenarios and just letting my mind wander. I don't do every single thing I want to do. Just like I don't say everything I want to say. Otherwise I would get myself into a lot of trouble. And a lot of us would. Just because we think it doesn't mean we have to say it. Just because we think it doesn't mean we have to do it. The benefit comes from realizing that whatever belief you used to have is gone. It's broken. Regarding smoking. You can even think about it and talk about it and it just means nothing. It's the energy's gone. It's been released. It's broken. That power 
that that seeming power, the power that you felt was there, is gone, evaporated. The trigger's not there anymore, it's gone. Which allows you just to move on with your life in the way that you want to. Choosing to do things that you choose to do because you choose to do them. Because you're in charge of yourself. You choose what you do next. Every second of the day, you choose what you do next. Which gives you the power. Also releases energy so that you have more energy. Realizing that you can plan your own life. You can start to make plans for a future that you can look forward to. To have more of those things, more enjoyment, more pleasure, more health. More of the things that you can enjoy. Which brings us to the end of this recording. I might have to put explicit content on the podcast because I said a couple of naughty words along the way. But it's not explicit really, is it? It's just a few few swear words. Thank you for listening. I will do another one of these recordings uh, in the not so distant future. Not so distant. Not not far away. Soon. Remember to take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself. Don't give yourself a hard time. Seriously. Be gentle with yourself. You deserve to be happy. Remember that. Lots of love. Bye.